All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Um, thank you, Deputy Ham. All right, State, call your next witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. State call of Senior Patrol Officer C. Finney for Acts 39 through 40. All right, summon Officer Finney, please. Officer Finney, good, uh, good morning, sir. If you could come, please approach the witness stand, please. Once you get there, if you'd be so kind as to turn and face Sergeant Inger, we swore as a witness before you sit down, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. First name is going to be Tyrone, T Y R O N E. Last name is going to be Finney, F I N N E Y. Good morning, Senior Patrol Officer Finney. How are you doing? Good, good morning. How are you doing? Uh, well, can you tell the jury I see your uniform where you work? For the city of for the city of Atlanta Police Department. And how long have you worked for APD? Sixteen years and like ten months. What are you currently doing? Uh, I investigate burglaries in West in West Atlanta. What zone is that? Zone one. And how long have you been investigating burglaries in zone one? Since 2018. What did you do? I'm sorry, 2018. Yes, ma'am. What was your first assignment in APD when you started? When I first started, I, I was on patrol working the overnight shifts in Zone 1. And what parts of the city, uh, like what beat did you work in Zone 1 back then? I worked the whole zone. I was arrested about. <laughs> yes. I worked the whole zone. I was aroused about. <laughs> Now, how long were you patrolled in Zone 1? For approximately, roughly like eight years. And after you were, after doing those eight years on patrol, what was your next assignment? You I got promoted. I got promoted, and then I made a senior police officer where I was out training the new officers who were coming on the department. How long did you do that? For... Initially, it was two a, a year and a half, and then I got assigned to school detectives. Well, I worked in the school for two years. So, is that uh, what do you call that? Is that an SRO? Correct. And what does that stand for? A school resource officer. So, what schools did you work when you were an SRO? I worked at Kennedy Middle School and Forest Hills Academy. Where is uh, Kennedy Middle School within Atlanta? It used to be over there off of James P. Brawley. It's closed down now. It's shut down now. Excuse me. And where's Forest Hills? It's off of Cleveland Avenue, off of Forest Hills Drive. And uh, what part is, okay. And was Forest Hills, what kind of school was that? It's going to be an alternative school for the kids who got put out of school for various reasons. And what grades did it have when you worked there? It was mid middle school and high school, excuse me. So like 6th through 12th grade? Correct. Now, um, can you tell me about your time when you were in SRO? Like, what all did you do? Did you interact with the students? What did you handle? Uh, I interacted with the students when they came to the school. We used to have conversations about life, about them getting on the right track, basically just trying to show them that they should go the opposite direction to get out of that environment. Officer, you, hold on. Officer Finney, can you do me a favor? Can you speak up just a little bit? Yes, sir. All right, no problem. Thank you, sir. And, uh, Officer Finney, when you worked there and talked to the students, did you have any interaction with the street gang? Yes, some of the kids advised they were part of street gangs over there. Um, I'm going to sustain this to uh, and uh, ask that you rephrase. Yes, sir. So you worked uh, for was it two years? You said yes at Forest Hills Academy. Yes, sir. Okay. And did you work Monday through Friday, or how how many days a week? Five days a week, Monday through Friday, correct. And when you worked there, would you have, how often would you interact one-on-one -on -one with students? It was throughout the day. I used to talk to all the kids throughout the day most of the time. And when you talked to these kids throughout the day, was it for any case you were working, or why were you talking to the kids? Oh, real, sir. Just to talk to them about, about life, trying to get their lives together, to get out of that environment. So when they talked to you one-on-one, -on -one, um, they were just confiding in you, talking about life. Yes, correct. 
and um, would you or they, how did gangs come up in those conversations? Objection, that's the wrong way. I'm going to overrule the objection, Mr. Adams, let me see this back. They used to just talk about life and why they was there. Some some of it was for gang stuff. Some of it wasn't. Some of it was for discipline problems outside of gang stuff. It was just multiple different reasons. And uh, what gangs uh, did you come across when you worked with the students? Um, it was the Bloods and the Crips. Uh, was there any uh, other gangs that you're familiar with other than the Bloods and Crips? Um, some of the kids used to identify themselves as YSL and Sex Money Murder back then. Objections to confrontation and foundation. Your Honor, I have a response. I don't want. I don't want to. I'm over the objections at this point. And um, was this through? Uh, was this through self admission or? Objection to leading question. I sustain the objection. Did you ever see or have any conversations about tattoos? Yes, about getting them on their face. Um, overall. I didn't hear. That was Mr. Matthews, uh, they. And when speaking with the student, I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And uh, SPO Finney, did you ever have any conversations or see when you personally worked at the schools any hand gestures or anything that came up while you worked there that students would dislike? Sometimes it was like handshakes, but that was all. And. Uh, I want to talk to you about after that, um, is that when you, or after you worked as SRO, what did you do next? I went back to Zone 1 working on the evening shift from 2016 to 2018. Okay. And then since 2018 to now, you've been working burglaries in Zone 1? Correct. Uh, when you work burglaries, like what kind of, is it mostly commercial or residential you respond It's going to be both residential and, and business burglaries. Um, and what kind of stuff do you do while working for them? Contact the victim, look for video footage, um, ch check and fingerprint stuff. Now, working in zone one, or I'll also say this, when you started Border Patrol to now, have you been post-certified? Yes. And back on April 26, 2015, were you post-certified? Yes. So I want to talk to you, kind of take you back in time to April 26, 2015, uh, SBO Finney. Were you working as an SRO then? Yes. And um, did you uh, ever have or work in your time in APD an extra job? Yes. Can you tell the jury what are extra jobs? It's a part-time job that we work off-duty. And when you work these extra jobs, do they have to be approved? Yes. You have to get permission? Yes, you have to get signed off by your chain of command. And uh, how does that work? Like, do you choose the extra jobs that you work, or how does that come out? Yes, you just, if somebody asks you to work, you can advise them, yes, I know you want to work. And if you're working an extra job where you've got the permission, are you able to wear the uniform while working that job? Yes, you're in uniform. Do you have your firearm on? Yes. Prior to April 26, 2015, what type of extra job have you worked while employed in your life? Uh, I worked the uh, old Turner Field, Mercedes Benz. I'm, I'm sorry, it wasn't Mercedes Benz back then, but the Dome and also the, the nightclubs. Uh, when did you start working in the nightclub in the city of Atlanta? Around 2010, 11 time frame. Okay. And uh, what nightclubs did you work at? At the moment, it was just Compound Nightclub. Okay. When did you start work? Or let me ask you this. Where is the Compound Nightclub? Uh, it used to be located at 1008 Brady Avenue. It's now closed. And is that in the city of Atlanta? Correct. What year did you start working at Compound? I don't, I'm not 100% sure on the, on the exact year. That's all right. How frequent would you work there? Was it a couple times a month, a couple times a year? Probably two or three times a month. And would other APD officers work with you? Yes, it would be a group of us working. Now, on specifically April 26, 2018, were you working an extra job that night? Yes, I was. And where were you working? At the compound. And when you were working that night, was there any other officers that were working with you? Yes, there was quite a few officers. I'm not exactly sure who, who all the officers were, but 
there was quite a few officers working on it. Was there any of those officers that you did know? Yes. Um, retired investigator Dennis was working with me at a compound that night. How often would you work with retired detective Dennis? Usually every time I worked. At the, uh, yeah, sorry, at the compound, I'm sorry. Do you have any uh, present day interaction with retired detective Dennis? Yes. What do you all do currently? Oh, we're friends and then we, um, we do Clippers and Cops together. What's Clippers and Cops? Um, basically, it's just a, it's a um, excuse me, it's a group of retired officers and, and current officers who go out to the community, basically trying to bridge the gap between the police and the community. And what cities does that operate in? Right now, it's operating out of Atlanta and St. Louis. Now, on April 26, 2015, what was going on at the compound that night? On April 26, um, the compound had Lil Wayne working. I'm sorry, had Lil Wayne coming to the club to for an appearance. So, can you kind of break that down? What does it mean to make an appearance at the club? Basically, just come in and show his face and talk to the crowd, possibly. So, is it different than a concert? Correct. Um, and when people was that? How often was it that celebrities or entertainers would come and guest appearance? Fashion relevance. Oh, rules, sir. It just depends on what was going on in the city. Since you've been working at the compound, had you ever had Lil Wayne appear there for a guest appearance while you were working? Prior to that day, no. How is a guest appearance different than a concert? Can you break that down? The concert, they will be performing. The guest appearance, they're just coming in with, with their entourage and just hanging out, basically. Now, back in... April 26, 2015, uh, how big a deal was it to have Lil Wayne as a guest appearance that night? It was huge. It was overly crowded that night. Um, back then, did, did you yourself ever listen to Lil Wayne's music? Yes. And when you, around what time did you get there, if you remember, to the time that happened? It's probably going to be around 10 p.m. Now, in general, how late is the time open? Until 3 uh, when you got there, what was, or how does it work to get assigned this position? We will all be, be placed in different areas just for crowd control and traffic control. Okay. Uh, what specific area at the compound was kind of your area of operation, so to speak, that night? I was at the corner of Brady Avenue and 11th Street. Okay. And now that night, was it raining that night? No, it was clear. And... Obviously, you get there at, uh, did you say, 11 o'clock or 10? Around 10, it was between 10 and 11. So, was it was it dark outside? Yes. Um, is there any lighting on Brady Avenue and 11 in that area? Yes, it'll be lit up very well. So, I'm going to approach you uh, with some photographs. I'm handing State's Exhibit 3 Echo, 3 through 7 Echo. I'm going to talk a little slower. We're going to slow this down a little bit. Is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to approach you with State's Exhibit 3 through 7 Echo. So if you can, just take a look at those. And when you're done looking at them, just look up at me. Yes. How do you recognize that? That's going to be the intersection of 11th Street and Brady Avenue. Is it uh, a fair and accurate depiction of how the 
area of the compound grading 11th Street look back in 2015? Correct. Your Honor, at this time, the state's going to move to tender and evidence states exhibits three through seven echo. Uh, any objection to states three echo through seven echo? No, sir. All right, states three through seven echo are admitted and published as you see fit. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. So I'm publishing states exhibits three echo now. And just to kind of orient the jury, uh, Officer Finney, are these, well, what are these? Are these photos? Are these Google images? What are these three through seven? It's going to be the, the location of where the intersection of 11th and Brady from back back then, because currently it, it looks totally different than it does in these pictures. Has, and, that, has that area from today till now, uh, how has it changed? Uh, basically, it put an apartment complex up on the corner of 11th and Brady now. Got it. Uh, will talking through these photographs help uh, your testimony in discussing this area? Yes. So, with State's Exhibit 3 Echo, can you orient the jury to uh, where, if anywhere, in this photograph is the compound? And if you want, it may, be, it may help you. There's a screen kind of behind you. So okay. that, if it's better, it may be better, oh. clear, better quality than those photographs. The compound's going to be loaded, I'm sorry, located in between where, like, the, the wooden, like, fence structure is. Okay. And what I may do uh, is we'll kind of work together with, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the, this pointer, all right? All right. And there's a bigger screen up there. That way, you and the jury can all follow along. Can you kind of orient to where the part of the compound is in 3 Echo? Just going to be right here to the right-hand side. Now, you said that uh, this main street is grading? Correct. What is that side street to the immediate left? That's going to be 11th Street. Now, in 3 Echo, okay, can you point out 11th Street for the jury? It's going to be right over here on the left side of the picture. Okay. Now, do you see where, in general, you were stationed on April 26, 2015? Correct. Correct. I was standing right there on the corner of that picture on 11th Street and Brady Avenue. Can you point and show kind of where you were? This will be right here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna publish this exhibit four, Echo. So, you, uh, is this photograph we were just looking at, uh, can you orient us to this photograph? That's gonna be the, the fence area right there on the right-hand side. Is the compound? Yes. And that's Brady Avenue, the street right there? Correct. Now, on April 26, 2015, you see where there's that, uh, I think it's a black Nissan kind of between that building and the fence? Yes. Kind of tucked back, you see that? Yes. What would this area be used at on April 26, 2015? That was the area for the VIP, also known as the section line. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to, and is this where you are right here? Is this uh, near, far from where you were stationed? It's right across the street. Okay. I'm going to publish these exhibits five back up. <coughs> so, with uh, five echo. You had mentioned earlier that this area has developed. You see all that grass and shrubbery to the left? Yes. Is that how this area looked right across from the compound back in? Yes. What's there now? That's going to be the, the apartment building. Okay. And from when you got on shift to when you left, uh, is this area, this intersection, where you worked primarily that night? Yes. And if you were to go all the way up 11th Street, is that 11th Street to the left of this photograph? Correct. What street would you run into? How Mill. And back then, where would people park when they were attending the nightclub? They would utilize the streets, and they were also parking the lots around the area as well. I'm going to publish six echo. Uh, what is that up on the hill uh, to the on the upper right side of six echo? I believe it used to be like a car on um, detail shop. Okay. 
And could people park on both Brady Avenue and 11th? Correct. And from this point of view, uh, you see, you, do you see that fence you were talking about where the compound is? Correct. Could you point out to the jury where the compound is in this photograph? It's going to be up on the upper left hand side of the picture. And you can stand up if you need to. Okay. Uh, upper left hand? Yes. And so I'm going to. Where uh, this night was Detective Dennis in relation to where you were? We were standing at that corner at 11th and Brady, right here where the truck is. Okay. Now, I'm going to approach you with state's exhibits 8 through 31, Echo. If any defense counsel wants to see, matches. Right. 8 through 31 echo. It's currently how that area looks at 1008 Brady. Or, or 10, I'm sorry, 11th and Brady. And how do you recognize it? From being in the area. And would uh, referencing those assist your testimony in the jury here today? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, are they here after the picture of how Brady Avenue and 11th Street looks present day? Correct. Your Honor, at this time, the state is going to tender the evidence state's exhibits 8 through 31 echo for the motion to Any objection to state's uh, 8 through 31 echo? Not that I made there. No. All right, they're admitted and they'd be published as you see fit, sir. Now, I'm going to jump around a little bit on how those numbers are. So we're going to start with 22 echo. So, <coughs> you have mentioned uh, Little Wayne's having a guest appearance. What is this structure we see in 22 echo? That's going to be one of the entrances to the club. And uh, you were just discussing, but is this how the area looks present day? Correct. And is that structure, has it, is it any different or is there any difference <coughs> from back on April, the night of April 26, 2015? No, it's still the same. Okay. Now, back then, 
Uh, would this be like the front entrance, the side entrance? What kind of entrance would this be? That would be the general admission line. Okay. Do you remember how much it was to get in there back then? I have no idea. Okay. Now, you see where there's this, I think it's a, is that a bike lane by the roadway? Yes. And you see those cones? Yes. Was that uh, right outside the entrance to the compound back in April 26, 2015? No. What uh, was there? Uh, it would be parking and, and there will also be some gates for the entrance to get into the club. Okay. Now, when you say gates, is this like uh, gates you'd see at like a baseball game, like to tell you where to go or lines for like a concert? Correct. Okay. So like gates that come up to like the waist? Yes, directional gates, okay. correct. And would you have one line, multiple lines? How would that work? It will be multiple lines. And would some cars be able to park on this part of Brady Avenue? Yes. I'm going to show you 20 echoes. Uh, is this a uh, another view of the front entrance of the compound? Yes. Now, uh, present day, well, I'll say back then, was that fence structure still there? Yes. And... Can you kind of explain, is the compound, is it an indoor, an outdoor? What is, if you were to walk, if I was to walk right through these doors, what would be behind me on the other side? It'd be like an open area for like outside parties to, during the summertime. Okay. Was there any seating or anything back then? Yes, it was, it was couches outside. And you see those numbers, 1008? <laughs> yes. What does that signal? That's the address for 1008 Radio Avenue. Okay. And... I'm going to turn to 18 Echo. You see that building back behind the fence, kind of towards the left? Yes. What is that building? That's going to be the actual main part of the compound. Okay. And this is, is this a closer in view of the front entrance to the compound? Correct. Okay. Now, will there be security at this part of the compound on April 26th? Correct. Would there be security at that VIP side entrance we talked about earlier? Yes. I'm turning to 24 at Echo. Is this another view of looking down Brady Avenue? Yes, that's going to be correct. And is this looking towards, uh, what's the first street you will reach if you were to, you see that car kind of on the side frame? Yes, yeah, so that's going to be the corner of 11th and Brady. So from where you were stationed, how far close were you from the front entrance to the club? Approximately like 20 yards. Now, this may be hard to see, but bear with me. Do you see uh, very back, you see like what looks like a bluish sign if you go all the way down Brady? Yes. And can you point out for the jury kind of where that is and uh, what I think you tell me if I'm wrong, a stop sign? Yes, that's, that, yes, that's a firm. That's going to be a stop sign at the intersection of Brady and 10th Street. Okay, so it goes 11th Street, 10th Street? Correct. Turning to 15 Echo, is this that, that area that you were stationed at that night? Or roughly? It's going to be the general area. Okay. And that's the compound on the right that you talked about? Yes. Now, uh, back then, you see where it says opium on that building? Yes. What was that? Uh, is that part of the compound, or was it back on April 26, 2015? No, it was not part of the compound. Okay. 16E uh, is zoomed in. If you were, if someone was coming through the VIP entrance you discussed, where would they go once they walked through what that gate right there? There was two doors on. On the right or left? On the right hand side. Okay. And where would security personnel be stationed for people entering the compound through this way? Right beyond them gates. Okay. And this is a, a, another picture of that? Correct. Okay. Now, 8 Echo, uh, do you see where you were stationed that night in 8 Echo? Yes, yeah, so I was stationed at that stop sign, okay. in the area of the stop sign. So. 
Now, I want to talk to you uh, about that night. What time was the event supposed to start? Or what time was you know, Little Wayne supposed to appear? I'm not sure on what time he was supposed to appear, but the club was open from 10 to 3. 10 to 3. And when you first got there, had Little Wayne arrived yet? No. Do you remember him ever arriving at some point while you were on shift? I don't recall him arriving. Okay. As in, like, did you ever personally see him arrive or realize he got there? No. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to publish 29 uh, Echo. Do you know where uh, is this? What side street is this right here? That's going to be the intersection of 10th and Brady. Okay. Now, do you know or uh, remember learning how Lil Wayne got to the compound and was outside? It was going to be on a tour bus. Okay. Do you know where that tour bus parked? It was somewhere in that area over there. And by over there, can you point to the jury where it, where it was? Right here. Okay. And uh, just to orient the compound where you were stationed, would that be uh, to the right or left on 29 Echo? It'd be to the right. Okay. And when he got there, for some reason, he guessed him, what part of the club would he come in? The VIP side. Okay. When he arrived and came in, did you, uh, you know, did, was there any issues when he got there? No. Was anyone threatening him or anything when he arrived? Not that I can recall. Okay. Now, where you were stationed, what was the crowd like that night while you were on the ship? It was, um, it was steady busy. It was just like, <laughs> it was a lot going on, but it was calm for the most part. And was it uh, compared to like size-wise, was the crowd average, larger, smaller? It was a little above average. And were, were people like clamoring to get in or jumping over fences? What was it like for people waiting to go inside? Oh, it was calm. Everybody was just trying to basically get inside the club. Okay. But when your shift first started, did you have any issues at the beginning part of the shift with any patrons? No. Okay. Uh, did that ever change? Uh, yes. I'm gonna publish 11 Echo. Did you, was there ever a part in the night, or can you tell the jury what happened while you were working at corner of 11th Avenue and Brady on April 25th? What happened? Okay. Um, while working that night between, I wanna say probably about 2.30, 3 o'clock time frame, we observed a, a group of males, about 25, 30 males, loitering in the area of 11th and Brady right there. Um, we basically told the male they had to leave. When the artist came out, I guess they got word somehow. Not sure how. That he was. I sustained a sustained injection. Okay. Now, I'm gonna. We're gonna break this down. Right? Gotcha. So, can you show the jury where it was that you first saw this group of 25 and 30 males? Which you described? It was gonna be at the corner of 11th and Brady. Okay. Right up here. And where were you stationed roughly when you first saw them? In the same vicinity. Okay. What first drew your attention to this group of males? Basically, they were just hanging out on the corner, and we saw them, and it was just, it, it just looked out of, it wasn't ordinary, basically, but like that. Now, do large groups usually appear at the club that time of night? No. Um, what time was it again that the club closed? At three. Okay. And in that group, was it females, males, a mixture? I just recall males. Okay. And what do you remember them doing? Uh, like you first see them, after seeing them, what are they doing? After we initially told them to leave the location, when they started running towards the area where the tour bus was, um, they were basically just yelling and being yelling, basically. And when you say we, was there other AP officers nearby you? Correct. Now, when you say they were yelling, like, what were they doing? They were just yelling at them. I'm not exactly 100% sure what they were yelling as far as all of them, but they were just being basically just going on, ranting and raving, I guess you want to say. Okay. Now, 
what when the when you all officers approached them, where were you trying to get them to go or we were trying to get them to go back towards the Lever Street. Okay. What direction were they heading towards? At the time when I when we tried to get them to go back towards Eleventh Street, they were going towards Tenth Street. Okay. And when you said Randy and Raven, what makes you say that? Like, what were they doing to? Uh, yeah. Can you explain that a little more? Basically, they was just like, nah, I'm not Randy and Raven. No. It was like. I'm going to object to cause of speculation and ask an answer. Y'all are? I will respond for the same answer. I'm going to hold over your objection. You can answer it. Uh, now you got some time. What? Why did you? What was the group? They were just like being disruptive, and they were making like gestures, being just disruptive gestures, basically. What but, do you mean by disruptive gestures? Like they were trying to get towards the to the area where the bus was located at. Okay. And so, looking at Eleven Echo, what would the bus? Can you kind of describe where the group was? Directing this to, like, where would the bus be in relation to this photograph? It'll be to your right. Okay. And I'm gonna, sorry, uh, 11 Echo. So, did you, did you recognize anyone in that group? Yes, at the time, I recognized um, Pee Wee. Okay, and you say Pee Wee, do you know what uh, his name is? Um, is, 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 is that a nickname? Yeah, it's a nickname. Okay. I, I know him from the club since he's throughout Atlanta over time. He was basically he was basically the leader of the group. He was in the front yelling out I've seen you. Objections right here, sir. You know, I don't have a response to that. Yes, sir. Objection. Uh, I can is it so your honor, what what SPO is a co conspirator statement? I'm happy to approach the bench if I need to. And what's your approach? Uh -huh.
three meetings, he would meet me when he saw him, answer. He was basically the leader of the group. He would be in front, probably up C, and then he would come up. Okay, and as to the objection, I'm, as, as mentioned earlier, I will uh, overrule the objection um, from the basis uh, given the court's uh, given the court's current ruling. Thank you, Your Honor. Right, and I'll give you continued objection. Thank you. Okay. What did you hear? Uh, did you say you were right here uh, on the 26th? Well, after 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 we told them to leave and they were going back up toward 11th Street, Pee Wee yelled out. This is my city. Keep fucking around, and we'll spray the bus. And that's when PB took our running up 11th Street. Now, what when you heard that? What did you take it to mean? You said spray the bus. I think he's gonna shoot the bus up. And I want to approach you with one exhibit 32 Echo. Your Honor, I showed this to defense counsel. I'm handing the witness what's been marked as 32 Echo. Correct. Do you recognize or take a look at that? And what is 32 Echo? It's going to be a Pee Wee. And uh, how do you recognize him? From the club scene in Atlanta. Is it a fair and accurate picture of how he looks? Correct. Your Honor, at this time, the statement was the tender of the evidence 32 Echo. Any objection to 32 Echo? No, sir. All right, 32 Echoes admitted may be published as you see fit. Thank you, Your Honor. Publishing 32 Echo, is this, uh, you can do it as Pee Wee? Correct. Okay. This is, is his name Jimmy Winfrey? Do you know that? Yes, that's correct. Jimmy Winfrey's. And when he made the statement about spreading the bus, how far away from you was he? Probably about like 10 feet away. Did he say it quietly, loudly, softly? How did he say it? He yelled it out loud. Did uh, Was it clear what he said? Yes. When he said it, was there anything concealing who he was, like a mask or anything like that? No. Now, after he said that, or let me ask you this. While this is going on with the, with the group of males, I'm going to publish 25 Echo, and what Winfrey said... Did anyone from Little Wayne or their entourage exit the compound near this time and come outside? Not in front of the not in front of Eleventh and Brady, no. Okay, where would they have come out at? Down by Tenth Street. Okay, and when he made that statement, who was he looking towards? Or he was, he was looking towards the corner of Tenth and um, Brady Avenue. Excuse me. Okay. When he and yelled it up. Tenth and Brady, in this photograph, you see where there's that white vehicle kind of dipped down the way? Is that the intersection of Tenth and Brady? Yes, that's, that's going to be the area of it. And where this little small cone is, is that kind of where you would have been? Correct. Okay. Did you know anyone else in the group other than Jimmy Winfrey? No. After uh, hearing that, what did you do? I advised Investigator Dennis what he had just said, but people even took our running up 11th Street at that time. Okay. So, I'm going back to 11 Echo. He would, have, would he have take up running this 11th right here at the left side of the screen? Yes, he ran up towards um, How Mill on 11th Street past that stop sign. Okay. <laughs> now, when he took off running, was he running? Was it slow, fast, a jog? How would you describe it? I don't recall. Okay. Um, what was his demeanor when he made the statement? Was he calm? Was he smiling? Was he sad? Was he angry? What would you describe him when he made the statement? I don't recall. It was just, I don't recall. Okay. Was he by himself when he made the statement or were other people around? When he made the statement, I think, I don't know, I think, when he made the statement, he's with the whole crew. And uh, do you recall any gestures or anything to anyone that went for you or anyone in that crowd was making? No. What did, after he went up 11th Street, did you ever see him again? Yes, um, probably about 
between two to five minutes later, Pee Wee came back down um, 11th Street towards Brady, driving a white and color Z28 Camaro, and he stopped at the stop sign while I was standing in the middle of the street of 11th and Brady. Okay. I'm going to uh, go to uh, Six Echo. Where Where were you when, uh, is this Brady and 11th Street? Correct. Where were you when you first saw him in this vehicle? Where that white line is in the picture, excuse me. Point for the jury? Start up here. Okay. And where uh, was any other officer nearby you when? Dennis was probably like 15 yards away from me. Can you point for where Dennis was? He was going to probably be right here where the double, where the double yellow lines are. Okay. Now, um, Um, I want to also approach you with one more photograph. Your Honor, I've shown defense counsel 33 echo. I'm approaching senior patrol officer team. Can you take a, a, a look at that? Do you recognize that? Yes, yeah, so that's going to be a white and color um, Z28 Camaro. Okay. And is it a fair and accurate depiction of how that vehicle that you saw look on April 26th? Correct. Your Honor, the state's going to tender for launcher purposes 33 Echo. And objection to 33 Echo, gentlemen. No objection. All right, 33 Echo is admitted, may be published as you see fit. So. Espio Finney, you said, I'm going to use this stick along with you, that, did you say that the car was, where were you, or where was the car when you first saw it? Wait, 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 right there? Wait. Okay. I'm going to publish 32, 30, sorry, 33 Echo. I'm going to give this back to you. Is that vehicle look like the car that Jay Winter was in that night when you saw him? Correct. And when you saw him, I'm going to go back to... Six uh, Echo, how much time had passed since he ran up 11th Street when you saw him in that car? Like, was it minutes? Was it hours? It was between two to five minutes. Okay. And when you saw him, what, if I'm, uh, if I am you, <laughs> is the car coming on my right side or left side? I was on the, um, I'm sorry, I was standing in the middle of the street, okay. so I was going to be on the driver's side. What I'm going to do is, Your Honor, I have uh, what I'm going to mark as 6 Echo Alpha. It is the exact same photograph as what's published on the screen. 6 Echo, I'm going to have testimony <coughs> draw. So, SBO Finney, I'm approaching you with 6 Echo Alpha, and I'm going to give you a sharpie. If you could, can you... Um, draw, can you kind of annotate on that where you were, where the car was, and where the detective was? <laughs> and is that 6 Echo Alpha that you're writing on, is that other than your writing? The same photograph as Six Echo is published on the screen? Correct. Okay. What did you, uh, um, can you kind of describe to the jury using the pointer what you drew on Six Echo Alpha? Yes, I, I put the car exactly where the white line is, and then I put myself right there below the car, and then I put um, Investigator Dennis in the middle of the street. Okay, so... You said you put, is this the white line you're talking about with the car? Correct. And where, you tell me where to stop where you would have been. Right there beside the white line. Okay, like here? No, no. Here? Okay. This way? Yeah, okay, right you would have been here. Right, here. right there. Got it. And where would Dennis have been? In the middle, in the middle of the street by the manhole cover. Okay, by here? Yes. Okay. Now, when, was his window down or up? 
It was it was down. Okay. Did uh what did you see when you drove past you? Um I saw a black assault rifle butt up in the air and with the mother <laughs> with the muzzle of, of the weapon um pointed towards the ground of the car. Okay. So the the was the gun in the passenger side of the vehicle? Correct. Okay. And so the muzzle was down and you said the magazine was up? No, the butt of the gun. Okay, butt of the gun. And you said a black assault rifle. Um, do you know a common gun that it resembled? Assault rifle. I, I can't give you a, a maker model. That's fair. How close were you to the car when you saw the black assault rifle? I was right there, like a foot, less than a foot. Okay. Now, did um, Mr. Winfrey, did he say anything or look over at you in any way when he drove past? He looked at me. He, he said something to me, but I don't remember what it was. And then once I, I, I noticed the gun, I invited Dennis to stop the car, and that's when Pee Wee sped away, going northbound on Brady Avenue towards Howe Mill. Okay. Now, how quickly were you able to advise the tire detective Dennis? It was like seconds. And what did you what did you tell investigator Dennis? That I saw the gun in the passenger seat. Did he have a reaction to that? I don't recall. I sustained the objection. What uh did was there any steps made to try to that vehicle that went through the shot. I don't recall anything else happening. Okay. Now, you said you sped off down Howe Mill. I'm going to show you, this is, this 23 Echo is, you know how we talked about that wooden front entrance to the compound earlier? Yes. Where is that in relation to 23 Echo? Right in front of it. So would it be to the right or left? It would be to the left. Okay, so you see where that uh, street pole is, kind of on the sidewalk, to the bottom left of the 23 Echo? Yes. Is... The compound with the, the two doors, the wood structure, is that to the left? Yes, it's going to be to the left-hand side of it. And after he drove by you with the assault rifle, he traveled north on Brady. Brady yes. <clears throat> and does Brady Avenue, as it currently does back then, have this kind of curve around? Correct, and, and it, it, it runs into Howe Mill. Okay. Was he, after he drove by you, was he driving slowly, quickly? He sped off. Okay. And you had testified earlier that... Present day, this area looks a lot different. Was this um, large apartment complex or building? No, there? that was not there. <coughs> now, you stated earlier that you had been working at the compound. Well, how many years roughly were you working at the compound between or before April 26, 2015? Like two years, five years, 10 years? Probably about five. And you had been working there a couple times a month? Correct. Okay. How many times in that span have you ever witnessed um, someone with an automatic weapon? Never. How many times uh, since working there did you ever hear someone threaten to spray a bus? Never. I stayed the objection. As you okay, did you ever write a supplemental report to this afterwards? Yes. Um, how did that come about? After um, basically 30 days that went by, I was called about the incident, and they advised me to do a supplemental report to what I saw that day. And that's how the report came about. And did you, um, do you know if Investigator Dennis, uh, did he ever contact you in involvement with um, any follow-up with this? I'm not aware. I'm not sure. And have you ever had to write at the compound that you've been working a supplemental report after an extra job you worked there? I'll state the objection. Now, did you ever have to write in present day, or let me ask you this, after this incident, um, how do you view what that, that night present day? Like, how were your nerves during this? I see, I see.
Why would this incident stick out in your mind? Objection is relevant. Also, facts not evidence. I stated objection. Do you have some memory of what happened that night at the event? Objection, Your Honor. Bolster himself, sir, and he's just testified. Overruled, sir. Yes, I have. I mean, the biggest thing about that whole situation was the gun being in the car and all them guys up on the corner on loitering. And other than, compared to other nights you worked at the downtown, why does this stick out? Because they could have went south if we weren't out there. No further questions at this time. Thank you to the patrol officer. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we have any further examination, how about we take some lunch? Okay. All right. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, how about we come back for 145? All right. Um, let's do that. We'll be in recess until 145, and we'll come and get you and continue with our examination. All right. Okay, all rise.